Welcome to the Totally Awesome Outdoor Show. Now, there's nothing I like better than going fishing, but when I can't go fishing, I'm in my workshop and garage, and I'm gonna be making something out of pallet wood. Now, here is a great tip for you to do, to make something that's cheap, simple, and pretty easy. I think anybody can do this with the minimum of equipment. You can look around and you can see lots of films where guys have got huge lathes and cutting saws, they've got all the equipment, but sort of defeats the object, doesn't it? I mean, if you're living in the middle of nowhere and you're, little, you know, you're out in the sticks a bit, you're hardly likely to have a huge workshop with lathes and all the electronic machinery. You're gonna have a few, maybe a few power tools, jigsaw, reciprocal saw, that sort of thing, cordless drills, and that's the sort of people I'm aiming at. They wanna get out there, they wanna make something out of pallet wood. Now, I'm not gonna show you how to strip pallet wood down. We've done that in many of our films before. Strip the pallet wood down, and generally they're going to be in about 35 inch lengths. And what I do is I cut inside the blocks so that I've got a clean no nail hole here and here. The only nail holes I've got are in the middle there. Now recently I came across, my goodness me, in all the years I've been messing around with wood, I found some pallets made out of really, really nice clean timber. So now here is a totally awesome tip. I said to the guys, how come these pallets are just so immaculate? And they said, we're a printing company. And all I did was go around industrial estates asking different people, are you getting rid of the pallets? Which ones can I take? Most of the time, they want to get rid of them for nothing. Do in the UK anyway. And the guy said, they have to be clean because they have all printing stuff and bits of paper on them. And they come over and they're sealed up with those, you know, big, what do they call it? Saran wrap in America, I think they call it, where they wind things clear. We use it for cooking, you know cling film we call it, all around, so it's nice and so lovely clean wood. So if you want some clean pallets, and these have been, oh God, they're, they're almost planed. Check out, say, printing companies, just phone them around. You can only ask, can't you? Now, first thing we're gonna do is I'm gonna knock up a hanging wall shelf, I just buy, I just call it double notching, like this, it's an opposed cut. So you, you this is a basic one, I've only done this roughly to show you. You have a cut like this, a cut like this. One slot goes into the other slot. I'm going to put this this way so you can see it. There, like this. It overlaps. So it's going to be a loose one because I need to do it roughly for you. So the slot grabs the slot of the other one. Watch. Push it in. And if I turn it round this way, you'll see it's locked. Now, obviously, this is just a rough cut piece of wood. It's not locked locked. It's, you can move it still. But that shows you the principle of having those two notches cut like that that are posed and go in there. I'll show you how to make a nice little hanging bookshelf for nothing out of this wood. All you need to start with, I'm doing this inside because outside, even in my garage today, it's cold, it's about 40 miles an hour wind, it's not nice. A tape measure, a square, just for cutting nice, even bits, nice, nice edges to it, which is what you want. Now, normally I'd use just a regular joiner's carpentry pencil. They're quite thick, so this time, because I want those notches to be just dead right. I'm using ordinary pencil here and my reading glasses because I want a fine cut because very often the width of one of these thick pencils, the actual width of say the lead in the pencil is enough to make those joints a little bit slack. You can overcut or you can, of course you can undercut and then you've got to plane them out again. So get yourself some pencils. I'll show you how I'm going to mark it up. Okay, for ease of use. I've measured all, all these pallets and I've already cut them so they're square edged at the end using obviously my set square here and I've made them purely because it just basically suits me 35 inches. You can make a two foot one if you've got a gap or a recess just make one you know that can fit that. Now if you imagine that's the shelf we're going to make and your uprights are going to come in here. If you put them right on the outside you might have heavy stuff on here and it might start to bow. If you have it too much on the inside, I don't think it'll look right. So I'm gonna come in and start the first notches, cutting them just six inches in, into the edge, both sides. So I've got two uprights and I've got four shelves. I'm gonna measure here and mark the outside edge of the first cut, six inches. So tape measure goes here. I'm gonna mark six inches there with, with this finer pencil. Get my reading glass. So I've got six inches and then you bring your square on and you've got to keep this nice and tight to the edge and you slide it along. Now, some people just 
put, put it upside out like this and then just draw a line across. I like actually to put the pencil tip right on the edge of my mark and then slide, gently slide the edge of the set square up. Now I'm just going to do a very light run across there. So I know that's square and I know that's six inches in. It can be, it can be, it, look, it can be anything. But the main thing you want to do is get these so they slot together fairly snugly. So you want to be aware of the width of them. They've all got to be the same width, these, these pallet shelves. I'm drawing up again where my pencil line is there. I put my pencil on it. I bring up the edge of the upright right to there. This is why I don't use a thick pencil. It's dead level because you have to allow for the thickness of the pencil. I've got my other, my other mark there. You can see between the two. But then obviously I'm not going to cut the notch all the way through because the other side is going to be reversed. So I'm going to cut halfway through there. It's going to be the notch I'm going to cut out. So that one, let's just come around the other side for you. That's just under four, that's about 11 centimetres there. I mean, they're all different sizes. So five and a half is where I'm going to, I'm going to come across here, five and a half inches. Now, you, know, you can see that, I'll just come a little bit thicker on there. And then the best way to do it is just do this. And you know, that those marks, that is the area to be cut out. So I'll just show you again, close up, you can see I'm exactly six inches in from here. I've done my mark on here and my mark on there. But if I use the very fat pencil, the width, I'll just do it there, the width of the pencil, see how much fatter it is? Well, by the time I put my saw blade there, it's gonna be actually a little bit wider than the notch I want to make. That's why I'm using a finer point pencil. And when I saw this, I'm gonna saw some on just on the inside of the pencil line, if that makes sense, because there is a thickness of the pencil. So and if this was a saw blade, I'm gonna put it right on the edge of the pencil line, not on the outside of the mark, not even on the center of the mark, just barely on the inside of the mark. And I'm cutting out that area there that I've already marked out in the notch. I'm gonna do that on four shelves and then that's my horizontal shelves, and they're gonna do the same to match up on the uprights. Okay, well I've marked up, as here you can see, my four uh, horizontal shelves with the notches to be cut out, but then obviously I've got to mark for the uprights, right, to go in this way to slot in there. So what I've done, you don't want them right at the bo bottom like that, and you don't want them right at the top, I don't think it would look right. You want to, you know, be aesthetically pleasing, I think they say. So I've marked up here four inches. It's 35 inches long. I've marked from the top four inches down, okay? So that leaves me, that's my top shelf and my bottom shelf. And the in-between measurement here is 29. I've got to put two shelves equidistant distant in there. You just divide it by two. But you get a calculator if you're not great with maths, and you divide that by three. Three nines are 27. So you come down nine inches, you mark it, you come down another nine, which is 18 inches, you mark it, and obviously the third one down will be the bottom mark you've already made is 27. Three nines are 27. That will give me four equidistant horizontal shelves. I'll mark these up exactly the same way, coming only to halfway through the shelf because they have to, they have to interlock like this. And I've got to go in the workshop then, I'm not looking forward to it and I'm going to cut them out and I'll show you how I do that. Right, I'm now out in the totally awesome workshop and I've pinched this in the vise because I want to keep it really rigid to make those vertical cuts. But what you must do with a hand saw, I'm not going to use a reciprocal saw, which is a long thin blade because it can waver off the line. With a standard hand saw like this, you can see how wide it is here. Once it gets slotted into the cut, it will hopefully stay straight and you get a straight cut. Uh, what you must do is not, there's the line of the cut, you don't want to be over this side trying to cut, you don't want to be over that side trying to cut, you want to be, think of your arm like a piston, just going backwards and forwards, and you're letting the teeth do the cutting, don't force it. So what I do first is I'm going to make a drawback cut here, I've got my thumb just on the edge of the flat piece, I'm right on the line, that gives me my notch to start. But what you can do is make sure that that line is vertical. I put a spirit level on there, lightly pinch it in the vise, and then decide which way I'm going to go. Right, pinch it up again. I know that is vertical. 
and if it goes off it's me that's put it off but the actual line down is vertical so I'm nice and square here I don't want to push the blade slow to start with now you can cut dead horizontal it's just me I'm no expert just me I'm just a DIY guy for 50 years I like to keep the blade down so there's more support from the wood and I can also follow that line down a bit better just pushing the blade backwards and forwards. I know it sounds incredibly basic, but there is a way to cut properly. And just following the line down. If it gets tight and you feel it tight, it's because you're coming off course and the blade here is pinching either side. And when you do it, I'll do it on a piece of scrap wood and show you in a minute. This end of the blade, as you draw it back, will be wobbling like that. If it does that, you know that the cut here is going off. The blade at the end should be all straight. Watch the pinch then. And be careful not to cut it too far. There we go, that's one. I'm going to draw the other one down. And I'm running just right down, barely on the inside of that pencil line, as straight as I can get. Okay, I've made my saw cuts down the side here. I want to notch this out here, and because the grain runs this way, it should be okay. And for that, I'm using a chisel and pretty heavy hammer. A chisel has a sloping side, a sort of chamfer, and a flat side. Now, that's dead straight down. If you are using a chisel and you put it this way, with a flat surface facing the good wood that you want to keep, okay, it might start to creep over in here and give you a bigger hole than you want. So the idea of that chamfer is that you can put that blade, the cutting blade just there, right on your line, and as you hit it down, the angle of that blade will push it away. It's never going to bite into your good wood, it's going to go away. I'll just show you. I always hold it, give it one little tap to start it, like that, or three little taps. And you can see I've got the right size chisel, you might have to have a bigger one, a smaller one, but that won't then eat into your good wood. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put this on the floor on a scrap piece of wood, then I've got much more, I don't get any bounce, which I am getting on the workshop top here, on the workbench, put it on the ground, and I'll get a much better clean cut through. Okay, I've got a piece of 4 by 2 on the ground. I'm then going to put my board on the top of that. And you see the chisel's already located in there. I can give it a good whack. If I go through, it doesn't matter because I'm only going to go through here. I don't want to put the wood on the concrete because otherwise I'm going to go through and I'm going to blunt this blade and I'm going to have to start sharpening it again. Now, you can see there how that's broken away. I can start to nibble away. I just don't think you can see that. I wanted to show it to you anyway just so you... Get an idea. There, you might be able to see, it's more for deeper cuts than anything, but you can see the chamfer on this on this blade at the end of the chisel has actually pushed it away from the wood, the good wood. So I can then turn it around and then trim down the excess. To be honest, with such a, a narrow piece as this, I can use a flat piece and go through, but I thought I'd just mention to you that the chamfer on the, on the chisel is there really to help a little bit of safety and you can ease away. So you can see I, I haven't split back into the good wood, now I can come back, go right on the mark, and just gently tap away. Now that should go right through to the other wood, just wobble it a little bit. That's broken out perfectly. Nice and neat. I'm going to do that with all the other joints, and then we'll see if they all slot together. Of course, what you could do to make sure that you're not making the wrong cuts, get your width and just make sure, look, that they slide in and they're not too tight and they're not too slack. We can see I've got the four notches cut out, which is going to be the upright. I've got my two notch shelf pieces cut out. I'm going to now see, in the moment of truth, I think you can see how that slots together like that. Of course, this movement there, we're going to tighten that up later, but they all fit pretty snugly. We'll try the other upright, 
through the other side and there we go we, as you can see that could be the top or the bottom well there we go you can hopefully see well, that is not fixed together but that is the shape of the hanging bookshelf but I feel <clears throat> it's just a little bit too angular I think it is a little bit too angular there too geometric so I'm going to put a little bit of shaping on the bottom with a piece of pallet wood of course and I'm going to cut a couple of or probably put four brackets in each corner across the back here at the top just there to lock back in 90 degree position so first job we'll cut out a little pattern for the bottom but I just want something like this to go in the middle spacer between the main shelf bracket I don't want it overlapping so I've got a piece of pallet wood and I've got my artistic design there cut out X'd out with squiggles the bit I don't want I'm going to cut it with a jigsaw and you say but how did you get that shape I used my imagination the first one I wanted I thought I'd draw a center line and I want a little semicircle there oh my bag of nails actually fits there marked it out finished it and measured from there to here so it's, that's equidistant ah oh, I need one that's slightly smaller oh hang on a minute we won't advertise it but it is that stuff that one goes here I marked that one there I thought ah oh, I don't want it like sort of washing on all the way I want a straight piece and a slow curve how can I do that hang on a minute I think the back of this might work perfectly and as you can see I just drew I marked around there both ends and that is a pattern for the bottom pediment I've got a that's a bit I want so I tick that that's a piece I want I'm going to cut if I can around there with a jigsaw take my time and that's going to fit on the bottom Right, I've made my little shape, little bit of artistic pediment for the bottom there and I've drilled a screw hole at each end just to screw up underneath like this. I don't want to screw through the shelf into the top because I'm going to see the screws and or I have to fill them, countersink them, fill them, sand them, this work. So I'm going to screw it and glue it on the edge underneath. But before that I need to make the actual structure, the shelving with the uprights, the horizontals and the uprights dead square and I'm going to do that by supporting it with triangles which I understand are oh, when I was at school the strongest geometric design so I've done a th I want four brackets to get my 90 degrees I've done three inch squares two three inch squares there and then I've drawn lines across to give me four triangles I'm going to cut them out now I wanted to do it in pallet wood but if I put these on the brackets as brackets at the back in pallet wood it's going to bring it away from the wall a bit more so I don't want that so I just use a piece of old thin ply that I found because it's not going to take any weight it's just to locate those shelves at 90 degrees let's cut these out and I can fit them with panel pins having cut up those four angles to give me my support so I can place them in the corners and as you can see that right angle should square everything up but only providing I use the set square first you've got to get everything straight first otherwise the shelf's going to hook at an angle you can work it on the inside or the outside and I simply tack those on with panel pins and put across the other shelves the intermediate shelves those little holding straps there I could glue it but I haven't bothered I then put the pediment in at the top just using a screw you don't need to bite through them really tight yes I could glue it as well if I wanted to but I feel these two screws are just going to hold it in place so with the pediment on the top I looked around the sides and I thought you know what that looks fairly angular fairly sharp it just didn't look sort of friendly to me so I'm going to round those corners off I could have done this earlier but just use the trusty old can of um, spray there any can just to get you the right radius mark it cut it sand it ready well there we go folks I've turned some old pallet wood like this Do you know it never ceases to amaze me what you can make out of pallet wood in a little bit of time just dismantling it 
Okay, these are regular standard pallet woods. This was a clean one, as I mentioned to you. I got it from uh, printing people. It's very clean, so look at this. Look at this. A hanging wall shelf. As you can see, I'll bring them up close. You can see I've got the pediment at the bottom. It just breaks it up. And the fact I've rounded there, the edges of those shelves. Now, I could have done that earlier, but that's the beauty. A DIY in your own workshop, in your own garage, a few power tools. You don't need monster lathes and all monster saws, thousands of dollars and thousands of pounds of equipment. Just the basic tools, jigsaws, drills, mostly cordless and powered. Stuff that most of the guys have got in their garage, and some of the women too out there, because I know because they email me about it. But look what I've done at the top. I put, whereas this pediment is at the front for decoration, I've put a similar curved one at the top. Did the curve with a paint pot, left a little notch area there to drop the screw into to give me grip. So that is all made out of pallet wood. Now, being as it's clean wood, I don't really know what to do with it, whether to varnish it or do the shabby sheet treatment on it. I feel some sort of lime, not even lime green, pastel green emulsion coming. And why do I feel that coming along? Because yes, it's free, and it's on the shelf outside. Beautiful. Well, the paint's dry. I actually got it in the house. The wife hasn't got it hanging up there yet, but it looks really, really nice. Goes nice with the wall. I'm glad I didn't put a panel back on it as well. As you can see, those side pockets, you can put little trinkets around the edge, uh, little ornaments there. It's good enough to take, you know, reasonable sized books in there, ornaments, albeit, well, with me, it's going to be sharks. You can actually hang it up with brass brackets on the back. It'll go to your iron mugs, your hardware store, and get little brackets. I got it just for now to show you and photograph it on a piece of heavy duty marlin fishing line. But you can stain it, you can varnish it, you can do this shabby sheet type colours on it, and a nice pastel green, which I later learned was called willow. Very pleased with that one. Honestly, get yourself some pallet wood. It's not difficult. You don't need any fancy power tools to do it. Big lathes, big benches, you don't need all that. You just need the basic DIY stuff, a bit of savvy, and you can make yourself something like that. And hey, if you don't like that one, what about down here? Yeah, look on our site. Totally awesome outdoor show, how to make a floor standing bookshelf. This one's for hanging, but I've also done a floor stander, and it's still here. Thanks for watching the Totally Awesome Outdoor Show. If you like these little DIY ones, hit that subscribe button, send the link to your friends, get out there yourself, enjoy what you do working with wood. There's nothing more therapeutic than working with wood. And do you know why? Because pallets are free!